Oh no, it's not working. Now I have to throw this battery away. Don't worry, you don't have to throw it away. It's a rechargeable battery. Here, try putting it in. Oh, it's finally working. A rechargeable battery, also known as a secondary cell, is a battery that can be recharged and used many times. Everyone will agree that rechargeable batteries are definitely a better and cheaper option than its disposable counterparts. Now, let's find out how rechargeable batteries work. Batteries have two electrodes, an anode, the negative end where electrons flow out to the circuit, and a cathode which is the positive end. To make things easier, we will arrange the reactants in the battery into an electrolysis diagram. Every battery is made up of chemicals and metals such as nickel, mercury and lead acid. In between the battery's two electrodes, an electrical current run caused by a voltage difference between the anode and cathode. The voltage runs through a chemical that conducts electricity, known as an electrolyte, which is in liquid or solid state. Electrolytes dissociate to form cations and anions, allowing electricity to flow. In batteries, there are barriers or separators to prevent contact between each electrode while allowing electric charge to flow freely between them. When a load, like a light bulb, completes the circuit between the two terminals, the battery is discharging, producing electricity through a series of electrochemical reactions between the anode, cathode, and electrolyte. In this case, we will look at a nickel-cadmium battery, where the anode is cadmium, the cathode is nickel oxide hydroxide, and the electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. At this time, the anode experiences an oxidation reaction in which hydroxide ions from the electrolyte combine with the cadmium, producing cadmium hydroxide and releasing one or more electrons. At the same time, the cathode goes through a reduction reaction in which nickel oxide hydroxide and free electrons also combine to form nickel hydroxide. In simpler terms, the reaction in the anode produces electrons and the reaction in the cathode absorbs them. The net product is electricity. The battery will continue to produce electricity until one or both of the electrodes run out of the substance necessary for the reactions to occur. The figure below shows the mechanism of a battery being charged. The charger shown on the top of the diagram is pulling the negative charges towards the right side of the separator. The electron flow is then reversed. Note that the anode of the battery has to be connected to the negative terminal of the charger in order to reverse the flow of electrons. The reversal in direction of electric current flow causes the backward reaction to take place. A reduction reaction takes place at the anode and an oxidation reaction takes place at the cathode. The cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide that are formed during discharge are converted back to the electrode materials cadmium and nickel oxide hydroxide. Now, the rechargeable battery is ready for use again. Bio batteries are powered by organic compounds. One of the compounds usually used is glucose. Just like normal batteries, bio batteries require a flow of electrons to complete a circuit. When enzymes break down glucose, electrons and protons are released. Bio batteries, just like any other batteries, also contain an anode, cathode and electrolyte. In the anode, the sugar is broken down, producing electrons and protons. The cathode is then reduced. This reaction uses the protons and electrons with the addition of oxygen gas to produce water. There is a flow created from the anode to the cathode. Bio batteries have many advantages. Firstly, it can produce high amounts of energies. One bowl of rice can produce an amount of energy equivalent to 96 AA sized alkaline batteries. Secondly, they are rechargeable batteries and can be instantly recharged simply by adding more sugar. Other substances used in bio batteries include bodily fluids like urine and even the oxygen in air.